Today we're going to go over why what you think you know about pedal stroke efficiency is complete bullcrap. If you ride very much at all, someone has probably told you or you've probably read that you need to have a smooth pedal stroke and you need to pull back and pull up on the pedals when you're using clipless pedals in order to be more efficient and to create more power. Well, I don't know how that got started. It might have been some old guy trying to sound smart because it does sound intuitive or a pro team trying to cover up for their rampant drug use. But at some point, this rumor got started before there was any data to support it, and a whole niche industry has been built up trying to convince you that you can have a more efficient and smoother pedal stroke by measuring the power at the bottom and the up part of the stroke. And this is just completely inaccurate, and in the video, we're gonna go over all the reasons why this is just not true and can actually be harmful to your progression as a cyclist. First, let's talk about the risk of overuse injury when you're focusing on trying to pull up on the pedal stroke. So here's a really popular picture that circulates around a lot showing what major muscle groups are used at what point in the pedal stroke. And the key word here is major. These pictures, however they're reproduced or altered, leave off the small hip flexor and knee stabilization muscles that are really used when you pull up on the pedal stroke. And these small muscles that are left off include the rectus femoris, the psoas, the sartorius, and the popliteus muscle. These muscles become problem spots for cyclists who overfocus on trying to lift the pedal up or even just unweight the pedal on the upstroke. If you've ever tried exercising your hip flexors by doing leg lifts or dead bugs, you'll notice that they fatigue really, really quickly when they're isolated. Now let's try and pedal 90 times a minute for two hours doing the same thing your hip flexors give out super, super quickly. On the scale of things, it's a very weak complex of muscles compared to your quad, your hamstring, your glute, and the larger muscles of the calf. So let's look at what an efficient pedal stroke actually is and the muscles we wanna be utilizing to have the most efficient pedal stroke. I want you to think about pedaling as essentially doing many, many, many little squats. And if you know anything about squats, the ideal squat form is gonna be to push through the heels in order to engage the glutes and the hamstrings. Now a huge mistake I see cyclists make is focusing on pushing through the balls of their foot, which is intuitive and feels right because your foot is attached to the pedal at the ball. And this normally shows up as cyclists pedaling with an exaggerated toe down motion on the downstroke. That's not to say your toe can't be pointed down a little bit when you're pedaling, but ideally we're trying to get weight through the heel and most often that's gonna look like a pedal stroke where the heel drops slightly on the downstroke and then rises a bit on the upstroke. The idea is not that we become more efficient peddlers by using very small, weak muscle groups to lift up on the pedal stroke, but instead to balance out the use of the quad with the use of the glutes and the hamstrings to create a much more powerful downstroke. If you've gotten or seem to regularly deal with pain on the top of the knee, around the kneecap, or just below the kneecap, there's a good chance that you're over-focused on the quad and not pushing through the heel in order to engage the glutes and hamstrings to take some of the strain off the quad. This isn't to say that you should just ditch your clipless pedal system and move back over to flat pedals because clipless pedals are more efficient. So maybe you've been shown charts that say, well, pedaling with clipless pedals is X amount more efficient and you can create X amount more power than by pedaling with flat pedals. And that's generally true, but it doesn't mean there's a wholesale application to, oh, clipless pedals allow you to pull up on the pedal stroke and that's where that power is coming from. What all of these charts have in common is that they fail to take into account 
the efficiency created from a clipless pedal system via weight loss and extra stiffness compared to a flat pedal system. So here I've got a fairly high-end, albeit disgusting, flat pedal mountain bike shoe. And the first thing you'll notice when I push on the heel and the toe is how easily it bends. The thing I can't really demonstrate to you is how freaking heavy this is. This is heavier than both of my clipless cycling shoes put together. Now if I pick up that clipless cycling shoe, it's got a full stiff carbon plate here and there is no way to bend that shoe even if I push as hard as I can. And that stiffness is going to translate into more measurable, measurable power whether you're reading it at the pedal or the crank or the hub. And clipless pedal systems can be safer too. In wet conditions, your foot is not gonna slide off the pedal when you're trying to create a lot of power. And they provide more ground clearance when you're going through a corner. So that in a nutshell is why trying to be more efficient in your pedal stroke is much more about engaging a squat action type push in order to utilize the glutes and the hamstrings than it is about trying to pull up on the pedal stroke. All we wanna do is utilize the large muscle groups in conjunction with each other when we're riding. That's gonna make us the most efficient. Focusing on these little, little muscle groups like the hip flexors or the popliteus, it's just not gonna add any power and it can easily lead to overuse. So if you wanna be a more efficient peddler, Focus on pushing through the heel in order to engage your glute and your hamstring in conjunction with the quad to create the most power in the most efficient manner possible.